the best habitats on this planet are where the beach means the forest and the mountain and this is exactly what we have here in Washington state. Looking for a camp once again. We struck out at the first place we went to, totally full. Uh, so hopefully, this one will work out for us instead. Yeah. So the deal is that all the camps, uh, the, all the campgrounds in Washington are booked forever out, and <laughs> on, only thing that remains is the first comes first serve spot. However, the issue with that is that we have to work on Friday and then we go late. We're out here in the Olympic Peninsula looking for a campsite for tonight. <laughs> That's right, it's like 7.30, uh, about an hour or so till sunset. So hopefully we find this before the sun goes down. Is this open? Nope, someone's there, Pathfinder. No luck here, so we have to drive an hour away. Yeah, we're in Kinot or Kino, whatever, Washington, and all the camps are full. To be expected, this is late on a Friday night, the worst time to look for a campground. It's uh, 8.45 p.m., oops. So, <laughs> wherever we end up, we're gonna be setting up our uh, tent in the dark. Well, I, we checked a random little resort with cabins and whatnot, and the guy does have three rooms left. And we took one, so there's two more. If two more people come looking at the late hour, but we'll have a place to sleep. So we'll be staying here for the night, and we got a tip about where to find a camp spot tomorrow night in the forest. So yeah, this will just be a quick pit stop, and tomorrow we'll get back onto the road and try to actually go camping. This was a nice stopgap solution to mitigate not finding a campsite. Now I can actually show you where we are with some light on the shores of this beautiful lake on the rainforest. We're looking for the world's largest Sitka spruce. There it is, the world's largest spruce. You should try to hug it. I feel a little bad climbing on it. Why? Because it's old. So? <laughs> it's very strong. A thousand years from now, your, our skin will look this way. But we'll still be making movies. That was really cool. One of the biggest trees ever. They say there are six champion trees in this part of the forest, but where we are is the Olympic National Forest. And it's really one of the coolest forests ever. If you ever wanted to see a wonderland magical forest from the fairy tales, this is it. the tree of life and I've seen photos of it but I haven't actually seen this for myself so this is the first time for both of us here it is it's the most bizarre tree it's really cool normally I'm like yeah just some Instagram bullshit but this is good What's so cool about this tree is that you can actually be in its root system as long as, of course, you're not damaging it. 
but it's so cool you can see the roots that are eroded you see it's an anomaly it's a miracle that it actually lives with how much of its roots are exposed like this very cool tree it's not just instagram bullshit though people coming every second to take pictures the people coming to make videos are much cooler we turned and drove 500 meters from the sea and now we're at the third cool tree on this trip so far one of the biggest cedars in the world maybe the largest we'll have to confirm that Wow, this is so cool. It's the definition of gnarly. See, there also smells very good and makes very good lumber and very good fire. It does, yeah. This is wow. <laughs> It's not terribly tall, but it is definitely wide and you can tell it's been around for a long time. This is one of my favorite forests in the world, if not the favorite. Looks like you can straight up walk into this one. Wow, incredible. We're really deep in the rainforest now, it's completely surrounding us. So are the mosquitoes. Yes, and they're making her eyes really red. <laughs> <laughs> The best habitats on this planet are where the beach means the forest and the mountain and this is exactly what we have here in Washington state. The third beach of the day. So what is this mysterious exotic beach? It is Ruby Beach in Washington state. It's one of the coolest beaches. It's really cool. It's different, you know, it's not like a white sand beach, but you know, that's not what really what we're going for here. Instead, it's a little bit rocky, but these rocks that are like really popping up like islands, that's the cool part, I think. And the mist and the trees right on the beach. Yeah, there's even a lighthouse out there. I guess we can touch the water. I'm actually curious about how cold it is. People are swimming. It's cold. Another really cool thing here is the ocean mist smell and it's mixing with uh, people's fires, which smells really good. And this is the great Pacific Ocean. The biggest, most impressive thing in the world, really. It's coming. It's pleasant. Yeah. Not too bad. Yeah. It's cold, but it's not like ice cold. This name gets, or this beach gets its name from some ruby-like rocks that sometimes wash up on the shore. I haven't seen any yet, but there are still some really nice little rocks. They're all really smooth and small, and they're fun to play with. Susie wants to be a rock hound. I do want to be a rock hound. I need a rock hammer. Yes, the mist is rolling in hard from the ocean and taking over the whole beach now. It's cool. Here we are walking through the mist on the Pacific Ocean. Ruby Beach. Rarely visited by almost anyone in the world. It's still a kind of a secret, but as you can see, Washington people know about it. It's just really hard to get to for tourists. Big clouds of mist are coming. Here's Susie getting taken by the mist. meal 
of the day. It is like 3.15 p.m. But we went and got barbecue. Brisket in a sandwich and mac and cheese and coleslaw. Smoked mac and cheese. I like that, just like a hint of smoke in there. It's really good. Well, it's been a while since we last checked in because it took us forever to find a place to sleep again. Worse this time on Saturday. So we were hoping to camp, but we couldn't find any camping spots. So the issue is there are no reservations available up till like what November on this whole peninsula. But with all that said, we made it to the beach and got a room. And down here is a place called Dungeness Spit. It's a really cool beach. A little windy right now, but it's really really cool, and it's gonna be sunset very soon. Minestrone to cook in the kitchen. of our hotel and squim that we found at like 9 p.m. last night. No, we found it earlier than that. It. But it took about three hours to find that hotel room because every hotel in squim and in Port Angeles seemed to be booked, which was incredible. Plus the campsites were all booked. But we found a place to sleep, so that's what's important. And then we got our drive-through coffee and breakfast sandwiches. And after we eat, we'll be on a trail. We're about to go on a hike called the Grey Wolf Trail in the Olympic wilderness. So there's, only, there's the Olympic Peninsula, Olympic National Park, Olympic National Forest, and Olympic wilderness. This is the wilderness and different rules apply to each kind of place you are. Probably the best part so far is that there's very few people here. Uh, there was even a local guy that came up and was like, hey, it's not usually this crowded. All the city people are coming. Uh, but yeah, so far everybody's really nice and We'll see how this trail goes. It should be fairly short, only seven miles round trip. Yeah. Uh, short compared to the other ones that we've done recently. <laughs> yeah, and not much elevation, but mm -hmm. they say very beautiful, so let's mm -hmm. check it. There's the map. It says we finish at the river crossing, we don't have to cross the river. And yet. another thing about this trail is that it does kind of uh, connect to some of these other trails that go to campgrounds. So it sounds like this is a great place for overnight backpacking, which is probably what we should do if we ever want to camp in this area and not make reservations ahead of time. There's a little bridge here and a very little creek. Wow, down there is straight up rainforest. So the All Trails reviews, pretty much everyone was like, there are tons of mosquitoes, beware the blood sucking mosquitoes. And yeah, they're already here. Already seeing thousands of flowers on the side. A lot of people complained about the encroachment of the flora into the trail and here's a big branch of nettles going into the trail. I've seen nettle snowdrow go towards like 3 meters high in the northwest, which is terrifying. Wow, I have to say this trail is very thick with foliage. It is a real rain rainforest and with that come all the things about rainforest like the thickness and the bugs and the mud and all that, but it's cool. Here I am on the carpeted rainforest. It's got a full moss carpet. It's so fluffy and so green. So we started out kind of like in like the woods where we we're like, oh, this path is kind of overgrown. And then you kind of go through here and it's like, oh, this is a nice path. 
a lot wider. You've got moss carpets everywhere. So really great changing terrain. And we're hearing a river right now. So that's got to be a big change too. Let's see. I'm trying out these sleeves Susie really likes for either stopping sun or mosquitoes and still being kind of cool don't and forget your bug spray around here you're gonna need it we're in the buckhorn wilderness from here on no development allowed just this little trail and you go in and you may sleep and that's it and no fires above 3500 feet but we're not there yet the trail splits here and this may go to the river to take a peek early let's see it's definitely very bushy hello so i guess this is the campsite what a fantastic river. This forest is pure magic. It's like you're swimming through plants. <laughs> swimming through grass. <laughs> Bugs. <laughs> this is life at its fullest right here. Have you ever seen this much green? I hope the camera does it justice so you can appreciate what we're seeing here. There's a lot of mushrooms all over this forest. These ones look like a fuzzy cheddar cheese. We're very, very deep now. <laughs> it's so green and dark and overgrown and so many insects every second there's one coming for you so i wouldn't call this an easy hike even though it's not very long and not much elevation because it's very narrow and the bushes are right in your face the whole time it looks like this is where we reach the river and some more campsites Can go first. Is there a trail? I don't know. There is, there is. Okay. We're looking for a place where you cross the river or you at least <laughs> uh, spider web. Or at least a place where you can reach the river so we can fill our bottles and hang out in more open environment where there's probably less mosquitoes. But this here by the river is one of the most beautiful part of it all. Part of the reason I like taking photos and videos is that it gives me an excuse to act like a kid again and go really into the forest floor and try to look for details and think of how to present this in the most artistic, mysterious, beautiful way. No reason to stop having that mindset ever. Gorgeous, pristine and completely green. Uh, it's the best water you can have. If you haven't seen some of our previous hiking videos, this is becoming a trend where we find water on the trail, but we always filter it with the life straw, which is a small little uh, straw that you can use. It fits inside of almost any bottle. The, it fits perfectly into the hydro flask here, but it filters your water and you can just drink right through it and you can feel a lot safer drinking fresh water on a trail. The trail becomes a little crazy here, I'll show you. It's very slippery, hard to step forward here. <laughs> that was the closest I've come to falling on any trail. That part I did is really slippery, so Susie's gonna have to climb it. Yeah, don't be afraid to hold your weight. There you go. All right. Coming back's gonna be fun, huh? <laughs> the trail straight up collapsed over there, yeah. too much erosion and I almost fell, like I was so close to falling. Oh. Really, Sometimes really close. You made it through that one. This may indeed be the end here. We found a little bridge. The high ends where the crossing is and beyond that is for basically backpacking, staying overnight. Unless you really want to stretch yourself, but there's no point for us today. So we're looking for where the river crossing is. That's our objective. Amazing crystal clear water here. Here we came up on a barrier to tell you you're not supposed to go that way. So we're sticking to the river. I don't know. This just about ends here. I don't know. Either way, I think we're done. So this is the closest thing to our objective, really. This bridge and this crossing, is, I think, is what we're looking for because we went beyond the distance that was in the app. We'll call this our objective, and we met our objective. I think it is, actually. And we even surpassed the distance that we set out to do according to the all trails description. So this is it, and it's really cool here. 
it's really among the most pristine nature you can ever see and we always say we're so lucky that our state gives us this opportunity because you just can't find this in most of the world and we're not even that far from the coast we started this whole trip with the intention of being on the beach and the coast and it was too crowded so we're so lucky that we we're like hey we can go into the wilderness and no crowds here we reached this collapsed part again I'll show you how to go down in this way. See, and you can do it even going that way, maybe even easier with both hands. And then grab the area as you got it. You're good, you're good. Keep going along that tree with your hands. Easy. You're out of the wilderness. We're almost out of the woods, literally. It's been a good one. I like this one. Very lavish, very lush, green rainforest hike. A little tiring, not the least tiring. A little. I am so sweaty. <laughs> <laughs> it's humid in there. Yeah, that really got to me. Yeah. But yeah, time for some water. And then we'll do a killer drive down the coast and find some lunch. So we got fish and chips over here and a burger turned into a salad, very strange. Cheeseburger salad. If you've ever wondered what it looks like, here we go. Well, fish and chips is what I'm here for. Mm -hmm. All right, that food was really good. We have two hours to get home, so we gotta get going. So we're stuck in the customary traffic jam in the end of each weekend here in Washington State, but it was a great weekend. It was an awesome weekend. We used it really well. We went to the beach, we went to the rainforest. We found a place to sleep twice, <laughs> uh, even though it was a little tricky. Yeah, it was hard. Each time it was hard. Mm -hmm. But we did it, and we didn't get stranded and we were most of the time on the coast, it was great. Mm -hmm. And the reason I love that peninsula so much is that you have, you know, the Pacific Ocean right there, but you also have the rainforest and the mountain right next to it, like immediately next to it. Mm -hmm. So finding such habitats and preserved like that is very difficult. It was a really special place and I think we were both really surprised though by how crowded it was. Uh, it was extremely hard to find a campsite and that was actually compounded. It was uh, several reasons, I think. I think because of lockdown, number one, so a lot of people want to get out. Then you have your regular summer traffic of people that just do it every year. They book a year in advance to go. Yeah. And then... Um, it's yeah. also a national park, so people yes. come from out of state. Yep. And it's a very good national park, too. It's very unique for the reasons that you just mentioned of, you know, it's like a rainforest, it's a beach, it's mountains, and super unique, but man, it was crowded. And another reason why the campsites were, you know, crazy busy, I think, was also just the cancellation of events. This weekend would have been Seafair Weekend in Seattle, which is a really big deal. There's usually music festivals, there's something going on in the city, but not this year, so everybody goes camping. And also, a lot of the campsites were closed. Yeah. Like, we well, why yeah, is we're that? amazed. Like, what is the justification during a pandemic to actually close half of the campgrounds, yeah. make everyone rush for the other half? Right. It doesn't make any sense. If anyone has an explanation, please comment. But this is really weird. Yeah, I can see how, you know, initially it was probably, oh, so everybody stays home. But then it's like, well, why did you open, like, half of them and the yeah. other half are closed? Because that means everybody clusters in one. And then a lot of us, we weren't the only ones looking for campsites. We ran into a lot of other people being like, you see any campsites? We're like, no, we're all out of luck. Yeah. And the hotels too, the hotels were crazy busy, no vacancies. And so we didn't see that coming. That's never been the case in Washington that we've seen. Oh, well, it feels but not this bad. And I think, you know, it comes down to the fact that Washington seeing its population boom because of the businesses here. Yeah. However, nothing has been adding capacity since like the 50s. We don't have more roads, we don't have more camps, we don't have more anything on the infrastructure level. So it's really bad that um, we're having this rush of unmanaged growth. Yeah, so it's, you know, partially that, but it's also, you know, this is just a really weird year with the pandemic. So I think all of that compounding together. Um, 
has been made it kind of interesting and you know again we haven't actually been out to the Olympics during the summer we usually are traveling to other cities uh, doing work trips and things like that so this is one of our first summers where we're spending the entire time in our state and we're kind of realizing oh wow it's crowded and it's busy and there's high demand everywhere uh, which does mean that the infrastructure does need to expand and accommodate more of that yeah yeah we need more everything more hotels more roads Oh my god, even the food. Yeah. We tried to stop at oysters today and they were like, oh, we stopped serving at four. And we're like, oh, but you know, we got money, we want food, and other people do too. So, yeah, two places were out of oysters. Yeah, there's another place down the road which was still open for another hour, but they were all fresh out of oysters. So, yeah, there's demand for everything. So, we'll see what happens. Hopefully, the infrastructure keeps growing because you know, it's a beautiful area and. You know, despite there being a lot of people, there's a lot of places to go. There are tons of trails. Nobody was on our trail today, so there's more than enough space for people to social distance or whatever, have your own little piece of paradise out there. Yeah, so right now we're basically stopped still on the freeway, and that's really classic here. Yeah. So yet another case in point, we need more infrastructure. Mm-hmm. But anyway, back to the point, we had a great weekend <laughs> and the Olympics are fantastic. If you ever get a chance to come to the Olympic Peninsula, do it, but make sure you have your reservations.